And now what we need to do now is to tune the throttle bodies. Now to tune the throttle bodies you remove the uh, manometer tube rubbers, which are brand new in this case, and then you replace them with the tube from your uh, carb tune. So I'll set it up and then I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll go through the um, steps of tuning it up. So you connect that one there, make sure it goes to that tube there so then you know you're dealing with the left hand one and the right hand tube all the way over to the other side connected into the manometer tube and then start the engine up to see what happens with the tubes. I've already warmed the engine up Up. Let it idle, and you can see that it's different. So what you do is you adjust the uh, cables going into the throttle bodies until they are the same. Now the basic tuning is supposed to be when the engine's ticking over, but I get it right when it's ticking over, and then I tune it for about 3000 rpm because that's the engine speed that you're normally going to be riding at you're not going to be riding at tick over you're riding at 3000 rpm so we'll be able to adjust it to get it spot on for then that gets rid of the surge and all the other problems that uh, these engines have right so now what we do now we'll adjust one of the bodies in order to see what it does as I turn this beginning to come up I'll turn that one now I'll turn the other one right. and it's spot on that's a tick over, that's pretty good, a tick over. Now look, now I'll hold the RPM. So now what we do now is we have to adjust these nuts, the, the, the locking nuts, so that they won't come off. But we have to be really careful that you don't alter the position of the cables. Because if it does, then it will muck up your settings. And that just makes sure that the bike then runs smoothly on both cylinders at all times. And as you saw, that sometimes you can get it spot on at idle, but it'll be absolute crap at 3000 RPM. Nice, isn't it? And then once you've done that, take the tubes off. Don't forget to refit the manometer tubes. Don't forget that because otherwise you get an air leak and then I'll muck up what you've just done. The, the tick over speed can be adjusted with that that screw there now there's a hole in the fairing to allow you to gain access to that that uh, 
that chick over adjustment screw. So before you put the fairing back on, make sure that you've got the chick over adjusted. That's why it's a good idea to always make sure that the, the engine's fully warmed up before you do this job. Because then, it should then, tick over around 1000 RPM. See? And it sounds... And now finally, dressing. She's going to be dressed up, ready for her appointment with the tester. You put these on in each of these places on both sides. Make sure you've got one on there, three on here, obviously. Make sure that all of the ones that are needed on the fairing panel are in position so that you can then physically fit them. Otherwise, you'll be like a complete idiot and having to take the fairing off <laughs> to do it properly. Like what I did. That's it. <laughs> Putting the panel on. You need that clip there for the Zeus. Then you need these three here. You need one there. These are in line with the holes in the tank, like we said earlier. Then you've got that one there, which is already in position. The one on the inside of the fairing goes on. Then you've got two here, which are already in place two here which are already in place and then two on the bottom panel to take the underbelly so when they're all done so i've just got to find one more for that this is then ready to be fitted perfect so i've got to find one more then you can fit the fucker <laughs> and then once once you've got Are you sure there's nothing else oh. that fell off when you took it off? Yeah, right. <laughs> a 20 second job turned into 20 minutes. Yeah, it'll be 20 <laughs> seconds on the video, won't it? <laughs> and it'll look fucking great on the video. <laughs> Once it's in position, all we've got to do then is fit the bolts. Now the bolts on this particular stainless steel bolt with uh, black rubber washers or plastic washers, should I say, screwed in. Don't do them up until they're all in, just in case you have to move the panel around to, to get them to, to, to bite. Just screw them in so they're actually in. And as you can see, look, stainless bolts make it look really nice. See, so that's that three. Then. See what I mean about having to move the panel around, which is why you don't want to do them up tight because you have to move the panel around to get each screw in. Once they're in, then you can do them up when they're finished. So if those two are just in on that, then you've got two more to go up inside here. These can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get in. As you can see. Locate because they locate on the inner section. Go 
shows you now underneath the mirror. Then the hard ones. Oh gosh. These ones are an absolute pig. These six here three on either side as they go into mm. the tank oh. and as we know from the previous video they're so easy to bottom out so you have to have the right screws with points on the end in order to make sure you get them in properly oh my god look at the point look at how long it is it's not very long and it has a point these, if you try and put them in without a point on, you're going to have problems. I'll show you what I mean. This one, see that goes in nice and easily, and it bottoms out, well it doesn't bottom out, but you know what I mean, it, do, it does up before it bottoms out. And if you don't use the right ones, then absolute swine. It's a swine. So be fully aware that you must use the right bolts for this particular part of the job. See, so once again, don't do them right up. Wait until every bolt is in, then tighten them all up. And these are the ones, quite often when you look at these bikes, these screws are all in at a weird angle or even missing because they're a bitch to do. And if they get stuck in there, you've got to drill or grind that off before you can get the fairing off. Of course, you're gonna pull the fairing which you don't want to do because it's highly visible part. So what I'm going to do then, fully bolt all of this up, uh, and then I'll show you the next stage, which is fitting the mirror. Obviously, what we've done this side is fully duplicated on the other side, so in a minute you'll see the other side already on, so I'm going to fit that as well. Fit, I'll show you how to fit the mirror. And then basically, it's dressed on the front. Once it's working, put it in now, like that, and then each one of these fits in these little prongs. Make sure you connect them before you do anything. Once they're connected, once it's connected, you have to hit the mirror. That's how it's on. Then it's on. Let's just see if the indicator works now that it's on. Yep. See? Perfect. Mirror's on. So the next thing to do then, right, so the next thing is you fit this into those two little holes. Make sure you've got a panel that goes into that hole there. That pops in and then this screws into there. That is then connected. That was easy, wasn't it? That one was really easy. And now we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Yeah. So notice the inside of this fairing panel being completely cleaned. Quite uh, a bit of a knob. It's got to be done right. But the outside's not been cleaned yet, because I'm going to polish it once it's completed. So just feed it over. Put this tongue here in the hole. Pop it over the tank. So it goes over onto those horrendous bits. Making sure it's all lined up. That's it. Come round the front. There. There. All lining up and looking good. And then all we've got to do is fit the That 
side is now on. She put the three bolts here. This goes underneath and is then bolted via those two bolts there. They, this fits in. So, two bolts in there, which I'm going to do in a second because I'm going to do it until the other side is on as well. And then that completes the, the belly pan. I'm going to do the other side as well and then basically then the bike is dressed and then the only thing then to do the final arrangement the final the coup de grace is to slip the seats on the fully adjustable seat we've got three positions on these seats low or high or intermediate I normally have it on intermediate I'm going to fit those seats on and then once this seat goes on, once it clips into position, the restoration is done. So the final stages, the sun is beginning to set, the bike is looking lovely, and the front seat goes on, unofficially kind of, when the back seat clicks into position, the bike is potentially finished but this one has got the embellishments of full luggage so let us put the full luggage on so that we can show it in all its glory the luggage whistling into the air Key. And this key locks the luggage to the bike. Once the luggage is locked to the bike, 